As we have covered the key principles of technical and fundamental analysis for cryptos, I want to throw in three bonus lessons. Now what these lessons will consist of is how to plot key levels in a crypto specific way, even more strategic and even more precise than the levels I've showed you previously. Now the reason I'm adding this as a bonus is because I've been testing this over time whilst creating the course. So instead of just implementing it like a standard piece of technical analysis, this is unique to cryptocurrencies and it seems to work almost every single time. This creates not only accurate key levels, but also a region or a zone to actually test where cryptos may spike to and where price will potentially hit should it hit a key level. As you know, I've said this many times throughout the course, price does not stick to specific key levels. It tends to break by a few hundred dollars or spike and close back within the zone. Now the other lessons will be three moving averages. We will then combine these together in the third bonus lesson for an overall entry and market strategy. Now when you combine these together, your precision of trading and entries are increased dramatically. And then when you combine this with the rest of your analysis, trend lines, major key levels, this will give you a major advantage compared to the other investors on where to actually enter and sell and where price may spike to you short term. And as you know, it's all about finding these key levels, guys. We want the advantage at all times. Institutional investors and the market manipulators understand these levels, and there's a reason they go to these levels even when we've seen all-time highs. We can combine it with Fibonacci, breakouts, and it will always go to the expected levels. So the MAs, there's three. I'll show you these here. Now, I will not reveal these till the next lesson, but as you can see, there's three MAs which we will be using for this strategy. However, in this lesson, we're going to go straight to the key level plotting. So what we'll do is we will refer to these levels as zones. So we're going to be plotting down zones. And I'll use this firstly on Ethereum, and then I'll move over to Ripple. Again, very volatile cryptos, so it's best to plot the key levels on these. So when you're working with the less volatile cryptos, it's even easier to find these levels. Now, how this works is, we use either the horizontal ray tool, which of course, as you know from the previous lessons on technical analysis, will plot from the exact point you place it. However, if you want, you can also use the horizontal line tool and plot these levels down also. For this purpose, I'm going to be using the horizontal ray tool. And if you prefer, stick to the horizontal ray also. Now, the way this works is you first use the horizontal ray to plot the levels on the close of the candles. We do not use wicks. We simply use the body close of the candle. So what we'll do is we'll find these key levels and then see how they work with previous or future price analysis. Now what I can notice immediately is this here, a straight resistance and a straight spike from this level. When price collapsed down, it retested upwards and immediately came straight back down to create new lows. So what we'll do is we have two candles on the exact same level, open and close. So here's what we'll do. We'll plot the horizontal ray dead on here. And as you can see, this is an extremely valid level of support and resistance. We've come down, we've tested this level again, we've come down, we've broken through, we've sustained on this level. When we've come back down, we've held on this level again just here. On the way back up, We've had two zones here which have just tested, broken up, broken down. The candle was then closed pinpoint on this level before going downwards again. So we can already see the next time we go upwards, this level will be tested again and either close on this level or go straight back up and bounce again. Now, this is accurate, but it isn't accurate enough. And we need to give ourselves and price a breathing space to actually make sense and bounce to. And if you'll notice before I move on to the zone, if I actually push this back slightly, you'll notice we have tested again, just here. Pinpoint with this candle here and huge rejections from this level with all of the wicks shown here. Now, we first go to the candle we've done this from and that would be these two candles here. And all we do is we then draw zones from the wicks of that candle from the close of the body. So we're simply adding an extra bit of space to where price could potentially spike to once it hits this key resistance or support level. So we'll simply get the rectangle tool. 
Now I suggest with the rectangle tool, actually making this as faint as possible. You want your zones to be faint but noticeable in colour, and you don't really want to obstruct your price. You don't really want to obstruct the technical price action. So for this example, I will use green. One of my favourite options for analysis is blue or green. So we'll have a nice faded green, just like this. And what we're going to do is we select the tool, we draw this from the very body close and open of the candle, depending on where you've drawn your line. For this example, we have a perfect candle closure. We simply add this zone and stretch it out up to the top and peak of the wicks the candles were attached to. So just there, we've increased this zone now to the previous level. And what this does is, if I actually stretch this out further, you can see we've now added ourselves extra confluent zones. We have spikes and retaliations from these zones exactly here. Moving further down the line, it now makes sense why price didn't just stop here, it actually pushed slightly higher. Coming back down, price broke up, tested exactly here, even opened exactly here, only to come back down and test this level here. We had a rejection here. The spike up and the down was the middle of this zone. From now we're coming down again, and as you know we may hit this level, in fact we will hit this level again. And now we know that in the future, we may not just hit this level, but we will potentially spike here before going down and breaking up again. So we can find several more of these opportunities on this chart. For example, here, here, just here. This will actually confluence perfectly with this region here. We can also add this zone here. What I'll do is I will draw all the way back here and I'll go to some zones here. For this example, I'm going to you, and of course guys, just to point out, you don't want zones like this. Whilst it does confluence very well with this here, and it does obviously confluence, this is simply too wide. And you don't want to leave breathing space for price to come here, spike down halfway, but yet you're waiting for a test of this region here. Only for price to reverse here, I just continue going upwards. They have to be accurate. If you leave the zones this wide, it's almost as if you're presuming and actually just predicting a complete wide span of price. So what we'll do is, we will now draw a zone of support. We have a resistance, let's find a key level of support. I can see that immediately from here. Now, again, I want to stretch this back, so I'll draw this back just slightly. Perfect. So we've based that off these two bodies here. We will then draw this zone here. Again, even that is quite wide in my opinion, so I'm going to keep it to this here. And then what we'll do is we'll simply stretch this out like usual to the close of this wick. We will then increase this ever so slightly down to the exact pinpoint of the line. So we now have a horizontal line, and as you can see, a highly accurate level of support and resistance, with spikes testing exactly within these zones, both times up and down. Several spikes twice here. So we now have a zone where we can spike upwards to and potentially break up and retest, or break down and test this level again. So when you combine this with the horizontal lines that we have placed, for example, horizontal line here, you can even drag that down slightly, horizontal line here, another horizontal line just here. We now have intraday levels and where price can spike and be manipulated to, to work alongside our overall long-term levels. We could even extend the long-term level to down here. As you can see, several tests of this region. These are nice wide zones, so we actually give ourselves profit-taking targets, just like we covered in the profit-taking strategy. However, in the meantime, and to give you ease of mind during intraday spikes, at least you know where price will go to. This always keeps you one step ahead, guys. Now, let's move to XRP just for another example. As you can see, I have the MA set up and everything already set. However, for this example, I'm going to remove these. We're going to hide the MAs. I'm going to remove this. We're even going to remove the trend line. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to apply the ray to the already preset levels we have for XRP. So if we want to find a nice intraday zone, we'll go straight to this region here. 
again, you can see the confluences already just underneath these candles here. We'll put it to the candle close here. Now all we need to do is we need to get the zone again, we'll draw it here, just draw it straight to the underside of the wick. Now all this does is you can see now when price comes down, we've not only hit exactly on this line, but we've had body closes all within this exact region here. And if we go closer, the candle closed here, we then tested twice from this zone. When we've come up and down again, we've hit exactly in the pinpoint of the zone. The spike up to the zone did not hit exactly on the line we drew, but it did land within the range. This still means to us there's a possible resistance level. Again, confluence after confluence here, guys. So we can already predict when the next spike upwards comes, we can expect this zone to be met again. Now we'll add one more to this region for the sake of visibility, and then we'll move on to the moving average lesson. Now for this, it's going to be just above these two here. So as you can see, a key level, loads of confluences. So we can drag this back. We now have pinpoint accuracy here, all throughout here, constantly bouncing between these levels. However, when we add the rectangle tool, things get slightly more interesting. We can increase this to here. we now have extreme accuracy on all levels. Increasing up to the wicks of these two bodies means we have perfect confluences here, a perfect test there, pinpoint here, spikes through here, a body closure right there. We have candle closures left, right, center, two wicks spiking here. We even have another test here, pinpoint on these levels. And all we're doing guys is giving ourselves the opportunity to understand where price is going to be heading and it makes life easier for yourself. And you can confidently say you know where price will be heading in the future, or where it may retest to once a breakout happens. Now guys, it's as simple as that. We can combine this with example, a trend line. Again, test after test after test, we can spike down from this trend line. And that's, it's as simple as that guys. We're just giving ourselves confluences. And when we combine these with the moving averages, we're finding the most accurate breakout levels and retest levels we can possibly find. So whilst it is extremely hard to predict where cryptocurrencies will be heading, we are now putting the odds in our favor more than ever. I'll see you in the next lesson where I break down and reveal the secrets to the cryptocurrency moving averages. See you in the next lesson.